Hey, Craig Zabilly here today. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up a 3D print for your Elegoo Mars using Chittobox. Stay tuned, I'm going to show you how. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to talk about how to set up your 3D print for your Elegoo Mars using Chittobox. At least I think I'm saying it right now. I'm sure someone's gonna leave a nice little comment down below. You go ahead, you type away, you go ahead. Yeah, 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 you. So last week I showed you the Elegoo Mars and the video was running a little too far when it came to actually setting up the print. I had a lot of information I wanted to share with you guys so I figured I'd cut that out of last week's video to make this week's video. So it's gonna be a continuation of how to use chip box or chip box or chitto box, however you wanna say it. I'm gonna show you the process that I go through it's very basic I am not a super pro at it it's just the basic things that I do to get a pretty successful 3d print I mean I think it works now there's a lot of settings I'm just gonna do the basics so let's get over to the computer and get that going okay Okay, so the first piece of software we're gonna need is Chipbox. Now, it is on your USB stick that comes in the package, and you could download it from there, or you could just go here and download it and get the software, and I'll leave the link down in the description below, but this is the free software that comes with your printer. The next place you wanna head over to, after you download and install Chitubox, we wanna go to myminifactory.com. This is a place where we can explore different types of 3D models that we can download if you're not talented enough to make your own. You can buy models here, but a lot of them are free, like all of these right here. Now today, I promised my nephew that I would make him a Deadpool, so that's what we're gonna work on today. And I'm gonna download this Deadpool right here, made by this gentleman right here. All right, so we downloaded the file, the zip file. We're gonna grab this file right here, and we're gonna unzip it. Okay, so it comes with read me first, tells you a lot of stuff and this is the actual model I'm hitting spacebar on the Mac to show you a quick preview but let's just open this up in Chido box this is what you're gonna see in Chido box I'll do a quick tutorial if you left click you move from side to side if you if you right click you spin around you could zoom with using the wheel on your mouse if you have that wheel on your mouse so we're gonna open up the file click right up here let's open this up downloads Deadpool bust we'll open it in boom that is a big bust now you can see by the red areas indicated in here this is actually your print bed right here this little blue thing that's around right around here everything that's blue can be printed everything in the red can't now I'm not making this a huge Deadpool so what we'll do is we'll go over here this is your size right here we're gonna do fit to scale and that way it's not this huge ginormous print just to give you guys a heads up, over here are all your tools. You can click to move him, or you could actually move him in the space like so. Here is your rotation, so we can rotate him, and you're probably wondering why would you want to rotate him. You do want to rotate him because it'll be easier to print him. I mean, this is just how I do it, but everybody always says to put it at a 45 degree angle. That's because we need to put in supports. What I like to do first, I'm gonna reset this. I like to hollow out my models because you could actually save quite a bit on resin by hollowing out your model. So we're gonna go right here, I'm gonna click on hollow and I leave it at 1.20, have it at inner and then we just hit start. So this is gonna hollow out our model. That's basically how to hollow out the model. Now what we wanna do is make some holes. Like I said, you don't have to do this step. I'm just showing you how I do it, how I save a little bit of money on resin. We're gonna go at the bottom here and I'm gonna put some holes in. And I go with probably about, I like a five hole, five millimeter hole, add hole. And I turn off keep hole. And I'm gonna put a hole right here. And I'll put another hole right next to that one. Boom. And that'll drain out the resin that's gonna get trapped inside your model. Just to show you over here, if you see this, button's here. This is a very basic program. You could go to home, you got the eye, you got top, left, right, or front, sorry. X-ray, so you can see through it. I never use that. And you have this. This actually shows you process that it goes through the layers of printing. And that's how this printer is gonna print. It's actually gonna build it up over time. And picture this is your bed. 
but this will be upside down and you'll see once we're at the end of this video and I have this printed. Let's just try putting the supports in this. I play a lot, there's a lot of different ways you could put supports in. Let's just see what this is. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go over to this and we're gonna go to supports. Now you notice that he's floating up a little bit. I like that because it puts a build plate, that way you can easily remove this. If you don't, if you think you wanna just put that right to the bed, you can adjust that right here, which was a pain in the butt for me to find in the beginning, and you put that at zero. I did that in the beginning, not a good idea. It's hard to get off the bed, and it puts supports underneath it. But if you want something really flat, every so often I still do it. And you see all the red spots underneath there? That is everything that needs supports. We don't have to put in supports, we could. We can manually put in supports like so and just tap it and put a support in. I'm not into that. I keep everything basically on the standard settings. I go to medium right here and I hit all. And as you can see, it put all the supports that you're gonna need in this actual model. It's a little much. I think I am gonna rota rotate them a little bit because I don't want all the supports actually on this base because trying to remove them gets a little sloppy. So let's remove all them. Okay, and we'll go back to this right here and we'll go to the rotation and we'll put them at a little bit of an angle. This is the part where you can take a lot of time and play with it. I'm gonna play with this for a little bit and then I'm gonna come back to you guys. All right, so I played around with it a little bit. You know, each model is gonna have its own challenges but I wanted to show you something really quick. What we're looking for, and you can do this, the slider right here, is we're looking for islands. This is an island right here. If you print this, it's not attached to anything. If you print this in your 3D printer, it's liquid. So it'll print it, but then it's gonna float away. That layer is gonna float away because it has nothing to attach to. And that's why you're putting supports. The software isn't bad, but it does put a lot of extra, extra supports in, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, like these supports right here. Let's go to negative, delete support. We'll click on that right there. This support right here doesn't need to be there. We'll click delete support. And then we'll click on this one. It doesn't need to be here. Again, I don't think that needs a support. We'll, we'll click that out. That's By taking them out now in the computer makes it easier cleaning this up when it actually gets out of the print. I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, get this working to where I want it, and then I'll get back to the actual slicing process. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up here and we're gonna click on this and we're gonna go to settings. And you need to load your Elegumars in that. There's lots of tutorials on that. I may do a full tutorial on that, but we're gonna have to pick the resin that we're gonna work with. And I believe the resin I'm gonna use is the red. I think I have a clear red, so let's click on the clear red and it's Elgumar's standard clear red and I will tell you a quick tip to you guys that anybody that's looking to get this do not get black black not unless you absolutely need to black takes forever you you're gonna double your printing time if you get black and now we're gonna go to slice All right, so now it's done. It took its time. This will show you a lot of different things. This is actually to show you what the printer is going to show as it prints. So that's pretty much the images you're gonna see on your Elegu Mars as it goes through the process. And the information that it gives you here, it's a normal resolution, the volume of liquid that we'll need, 34 milligrams of actual fluid, this will tell you the weight right here, the price. I put in the price of what my prints are, which you could do in settings. So this is actually gonna cost me a dollar and four cents. And the print time is gonna be six hours and 55 minutes and 31 seconds. And you have all this information right here, what the exposure rate is. And all right, so we'll just close that out here. So it looks pretty good. We're gonna save it and we're gonna call this Deadpool. I just like to call them ready and I'm gonna put it in that same folder. I'm gonna save that. It does take a little time to compile this file. Okay, so now it's saved out. Just to give you guys an idea about the black, this is why I tell you I wouldn't buy the black because we went from six and a half hours to ten and a half hours. Same price, same everything about this model. I think it has to do with the UV light actually passing through the actual liquid. It needs more exposed time. That's just my theory on it. But you could see ten hours and thirty minutes. I mean, that's that's... That's a lot of extra time just to print this for it to be in black. So that's just my two cents on that. I learned that the hard way. I did buy black. I've been using black and it took that much longer for these to print. 
So try to stick to the translucence and the gray or the white. Out another tip that I want to give you guys, you put a lot of work and time into actually building out this model and you may need to tweak it or fix it if the print doesn't come out right. You can also click here and save out this file and if you go to save as instead of an STL file which you really don't want to do because then it'll make this part of the model you want to be able to make it still workable save it as Cheeto box project and I always call it my name so that way I know I messed with it and save because if you go back you can't open up the actual print file because it for some reason it doesn't work very well and if you were to open this up say like if we save this as an SLL file and we'll just call it ready and you delete this and you open it now it's all one piece and you can't edit these supports if you go in here there's no support so now it's it's actually part of the file so you can't work with it now if I import the other one that's the Cheeto box Deadpool bus will I can still change the supports. So if you click on this one, you can't change any of the supports. If we go into supports, you can't click on these and delete them. It doesn't see them as supports. But if I go into this one, I could still click in the supports or I can remove the supports and start over and rework it from there. This one, I can't do that. I can't, if I click on this one and I go to remove supports, it's not gonna do anything. It's, it's already an STL file, so that's part of your model now. Just a little quick tip there. It took me quite a few times of doing this to realize, hey, let me try and do it this way so that way I can come back to my project and rework it and reprint it and make it better. All right, so now that we got them all sliced up and ready to go, let's go over to the file. I have it in download. We'll open that up right there. We'll go to the bust file and we want the file that is Deadpool bust ready. We're going to put our USB stick that came with the printer into the actual computer. When that pops up, it should say no name. I don't know why I didn't change it to Elegoo Mars, but I didn't. And we'll let that load and there's your files. And I put it in my prints. I made up my own little my print thing and we're going to click and drag this file over and let that transfer. All right, and then we'll just eject the USB drive like so and we'll go over to the printer now. So that's basically how you use Chittobox. So I use it very basically. I'm sure there's other settings that you guys can do to maximize how the actual supports get connected. There's a lot of stuff. I haven't played with it. I just really want to do prints, go to the next level and sand them down and clean them up and then go on to painting. So I think it's pretty good results. That's the Deadpool from last week. I showed you how to print it. If you want to see that video, you can go right here and you can go and take a look at the actual printing process of this Deadpool. Deadpool. This was actually just how I set up my prints. I'm probably gonna come out with more videos. I'm actually thinking about doing a paint one. I, I you know, I'm not the greatest painter in the world. I did this one and I 3D printed this on the Yellow Goo Mars. I had to do it in several layers and this took about 33 hours to print. So I think it came out pretty good. It's not bad. Leave a comment down below if you'd like me to do a tutorial on what paints I use and how to paint your 3D objects because I did a lot of research and I did a lot of trial and error to find out which acrylics would actually stick to the uh, 3D resin. This is several things that I did to make this, but I don't want to get into that. But I just want to show you the possibilities of what you can do with this 3D printer and it's really cool. And like I said, I'm not the greatest painter in the world, but I did learn a lot of cool techniques on how to get the paint actually on the object. And so, like I said, leave a comment down below if you want that information, if it's something that you think. And if I get enough people that say yes, I will do a video. Maybe we'll paint him. That's it for me guys. If this helped you in any way, please like and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. And remember, you can do anything, and I mean anything, if you put your mind to it. Later guys. But if I go into this one, you're still here? You haven't clicked on all these videos that I made? or better yet, like button, or even better, subscribe button. Just put, putting it out there.